Epcom. Absolutely. And and until that threat comes in, until you pull contracts away from the rest of his teammates, you don't get these free and, and clean looking bot lane dives where if you know contracts must be top yep. to stop Darshan, you can just keep running bot lane, keeping the turrets down. The game started three for zero in turrets because Darshan pulled all the attention, because Xmithy got Darshan there. And then when it came to late game, who he just did a wonderful job of landing all the damage. He one shot sneaking the last team fight. And now we're ready to go with game three to see what kind of game we've got afoot. Three times in a row, blue side, Zyroban rise well off the table. Rengar, Camille, LeBlanc, the expected red sides, but we'll have to see. Uh, I was asking a question of, if there's a team you leave Camille up against, is it Cloud9? Because Impact doesn't play a whole lot of carry top laners. Just food for thought for a moment. It may be, still be banned away. Sad life. Yeah. And Got the cut. Picked up. Just really interesting to see that super early Fiora presence there. And, and it sets up for a second round Maokai pick for Cloud9. CLG preempts that, of course. And we've seen Impact happy to play Nautilus into the matchup. He could still have played a different style. But tank versus tank removes the kind of gameplay that CLG was exceeding at before. It's a high execution type composition as well, where you're splitting, having to coordinate everybody, but also make sure that your early game is good, that they don't avoid you, that you play around their wards, and then when you're closing the game out, take the ne necessary risks to, to actually just get those turrets, which I think Darshan did a really good job of doing. Mm -hmm. He died a few times that was rather silly, but I think every time, Counter Logic Gaming were able to capitalize whether it was pressure, ward control, or a turret in response. Mm -hmm. but that's not this game. It's not. We'll see what happens here. Tank in the top lane. Varus versus Ash three times in a row. Varus, I think, every single time has been picked first round by the red side. Kha'Zix was first picked every single time. And the Kha'Zix is always won, and the Varus is always lost. Not just because of them. I take it back. Yes, there was a Jin earlier. My apologies. Ash comes in. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. There was, there was Jin versus Varus, and then Ash versus Varus came the rest of the time. Zyrena's pointing his notes to me, and I finally understood what he meant by that. Malzar coming through for a smoothie. A different look for him. No longer the tank. Wants to get some heavy damage down. Take the Malzahar away from Aphromoo. And once again, CLG really, really, really want to play Olaf. They consider it so valuable, and it surprises me a bit, but it's what they want to do. I mean, he runs straight through the suppression and the Ash arrow, so it... Smithy can have that early game pressure. I would think he would focus this low mobility bottom lane. And Counter Lodge Gaming saving both their mid lane and their support. As their yep. last few picks here. Well, ooh, are they going to pinch the top lane? Ooh. Yeah, desynced rolls. They de might. Desynced rolls. CLG going to double ban tops. Cloud9 should probably double ban support. Ooh. This actually becomes quite awkward if you ban the Poppy out as well. Because you force him onto possibly a Shen. Jace, possibly a Shen. And that's the thing, as I was saying, like, it may be the Shen, but it's a little bit different. Yeah, it is a different look. We'll see what ends up happening here. And sometimes you get into a situation where you'd rather they play a certain champion and say, we know what your next pick is. Please do it. It suits us well. Like, I'm not sure they want to give Impact Shen and yeah. set him up for that because he's been so good on the champion specifically. Into Maokai as well. It's quite a good matchup. Uh, and you have we different don't see routes from too. almost anyone else, right? He's very few players who actually go for that. Syndra going to be the ban. It leaves Corky as a viable option, of course. Syndra normally good into the matchup, from my knowledge, mid lane. Last band to come through for Cloud9. Will they get rid of another major enchanter away from Aphromoo, or will they send in a quick mid lane band themselves? Corky. Oriana was good for him if they want to go for the Cassio. Misfortune is also something that we're actually seeing a dry spell of. Yeah. Yep. Fortune often a good matchup into Malzahar, and we know Afro was often happy to play for the landing phase, to pick for the landing phase. Not gonna happen here. First pick, priority to counter logic gaming. They can match supports or they can wait on that. Or they can go priority in the mid lane and get the best left available. Every single game so far, they've let their mid laner get counter -picked. This time around, they're not gonna do it. And the Organa come through early on. This time giving Jensen the opportunity to counter pick the lane. C9 will of course also need their top laner to round out the draft. Last time they had picked Azir into the Oriana from Cloud9 side. And then in the game one, it was Cassiopeia that was picked before and the Oriana picked after, so yeah. See, this is why the Syndra ban is weird to me. I forget if Ori's supposed to get on a Syndra. I feel like it would be okay since you naturally 
shield yourself some of the damage. Uh, I don't think it's not tough. great. I okay. She's too powerful. Fair enough. But also then, are you more afraid of Nautilus or Shen in the matchups if we know Impact's so good at Shen? Again, CLG clearly thinks this is the right choice for them, so I'm not going to completely critique it. Just yeah, the Shen uh, options were there. The Shen uh, doesn't have the same priority early like a Nautilus that shoved in. Had ah! Mid. Had Arena mid for Jensen and Oriana. This is going to be fun. We've seen Jensen play a lot of different assassins in the mid lane. Here's another one in. Cat should be a fun one to watch. Spicy, especially with the crowd control that's not on Counter Logic Gaming side. That's what Lulu, that's I was looking for there. Yep. Point and click. Same thought as you. Good in lane against Malzahar. Pretty easy to kill the Voidlings off. With an ulti in a team fight, you can give him a shield, you can give him an ult. Katarina dives in. You can CC her as well. Lulu fits a lot of what CLG wants to do. And it's two shields and two hasting champions for the Olaf jungle. The comp lines up so very well. This could look great for Counter Logic Gaming. They've got the synergy they need for Xmithy and Darshan to crush the front line. Just a question of do they have the damage to follow through? This comp is so similar to the one they played in the very first game of the series. I believe the only champion different is it's Lulu instead of Thresh. Unless I misremember. Oh, exactly right. Yeah. So one champion different. Cloud9, very different for themselves. We'll see what it looks like as the end of Picks and Bands comes through. And the CLG composition will play quite similarly, but they will have a movement speed for the Olaf from two members, like you said, to rush Xmithy into that back line, put pressure onto the Ash and Malzahar, and not be something that they can actually peel away. But then you look at cloud Nine side, low wave clear. Usually you want to circumvent your wave clear problem by having the Varus as your AD carry, mm -hmm. uh, but and it's kind of low here for cloud Nine. So siege situations, they'll actually be looking more for dives or Katarina getting in there or Ash arrows to actually pick people off. So. They aren't completely defenseless, but if they're actually able to engage, it's the offense that they need to turn on when they're on the back foot. Yeah, Cloud9, a lot of good individual offense tools. Kha'Zix shows up with a Shen on top. Ash arrows, Mal, Zoltis, Katarina doing Katarina things. It's going to be volatile here for Cloud9. CLG, a pretty tried and true 5v5 comp. Double supports, one in the mid, one in the bot lane. And here we go into the rift. Third and final game, the last of the week. Can Cloud9 hold on to their undefeated record? They are 3-0, and but now this one neck and neck. Will they will they improve? Will they fall down? Yep, they could have sole possession of first place in the NALCS at the week at the end of week two. Welcome or they could fall down three. and be where FlyQuest and I believe TSM are currently mm -hmm. and Phoenix won. Yeah. With a lot of teams that are right there jockeying for position as we would move into week three, and you definitely want to be on top. Absolutely. And you talk about uh, jockeying for position. Counter Logic Gaming have had a very rough start to the split themselves. One and two to begin it. Uh, not going to kill them, but hey, it's meaningful damage. Sneaky will be able to recall in time to not lose anything. Get the information as well. So it's the counter. If you have people invade your bottom side jungle, you know you have numbers advantage. So invade in top. Uh, trade back a little bit. There's an interesting interaction with Malzahar Voidlings. Uh, I don't know if they specifically apply on hit effects, but they do trigger the Bandit Mastery. And so you'll see Smoothie randomly get three gold for things from Voidlings attacking stuff. Like, at one point, he had literally six gold in inventory, which was Voidlings hitting things but not triggering spell thieves. And I was just... I don't know how exactly all that works. You can see, like, the awkward number there. That's nine plus eight. That like that almost sense? shouldn't even happen. Like that's I don't know how he has exactly that because you'd think that they would trigger spell thieves, but sometimes they're not, and I don't understand. I'm sure someone knows. I'm just it's weird. He triggered bandit three times and spell thieves once. Hashtag just mouth a hard thing. Just wanted to bring that out. Yeah, I was like. I was looking back at it, I'm like, did it attack two separate targets? And the bandit just went off. On so bandit does have uh, individual target cooldowns. Yeah. You can actually trigger it twice or help five times by attacking everyone in the team fight. Um, the cooldown is per target. And that's what happened. You got but three and one auto. But I guess they don't trigger Spell Thief. Nope. Which today I learned, I guess. Which is, because uh, Spell Thief specifically says, I believe, basic attacks and spells and basic attacks. Yeah, but like Zyra plants do it. Oh, that's right. a so, good like, point. Pets have a... Have a reason to show it, but you can see the trade right here, Smoothie taking a lot of damage, and the thing is, as long as you're playing around the Voidlings, there just is more damage. You can see Stixay runs away, and Afro one-shots the Voidling. All he did was take a rank one Malefic Visions, and the rest is good, and look at Afro playing it so well, getting two-man Glitter Lances every time. 
mechanically very good at this champ. Yeah, and you'll be seeing more of this champion as the 7.2 buffs came through. Yeah. So next That'll week, be next week. Please. All of you in life can already enjoy buff Lulu. <laughs> Darshan battling with impact. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was talking about this earlier and didn't quite get to finish it, where the Nautilus will just shove the Maokai in the entire time. And although Shen does a lot of damage to the Maokai, he doesn't have wave clear. So you have to wait for Bami Cinder. Some people will circumvent the issue by buying a Tiamat first item on the Shen. Uh, but the Maokai just does get priority in the lane, so he can roam, he can push up, get to cover him with wards a little bit more during the early game, and the Shen just, you know, eventually gets to the point where it's hard to move him from that lane. Contract knows it's going to be secured. Smithy backs off knowing he had no smite, and Contract doesn't have to burn his either. Top scuttle control for counter... Sorry, for Cloud9. Got ahead of myself there. Yeah. Both we'll start with C. Yeah, exactly. I was, like, reading the logo, too, and I was like, yeah, I know what team this is, and I just said the wrong name. Uh, and the 9 is like a lowercase g, so... True! The g was like right there. You it's an upside-down g. Anymore. 6 and g are basically <laughs> the same character. You're blowing my mind, freak. I know, it's insane. And a c is like an open parenthesis. Uh, or an open square bracket. Either one, it's fine. I don't know what's real anymore. How often have you used leet in, oh. in talking? You know, using, using ones for l's? It's been like 6 years, man. Oh, it's been like six days for me. <laughs> I still do it sometimes, just for fun. Just gotta keep my gotta fun. keep my linguistic skills sharp, you know. <laughs> I'm fluent in more than one language, guys. I speak some French fluently. Put that on your resume. Yep. That would probably go over well. <laughs> like, not even joking. Only at a gaming company. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, not not even joking. I'm hip. I'm part of the culture. Fellow kids, I use my E's as threes. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> What's great is like I don't think Elite really gets used anymore, so it just shows that I'm like in my late twenties. Yeah, actually, I haven't heard that uh, yeah. for a long time. Let's see, Impact hasn't TP'd back this lane at all or anything like that. Neither has Darshan. That's true. Took a back though. Yeah, true. He didn't burn his teleport, and Darshan's still pretty close in CS, so that's kind of nice for him. Darshan looking for another trade and Ooh, Zapling. Nope, didn't get him. It was going to be important, trust me. All the emphasis was not made up by any means. Okay, just kidding. Well, Catalogic Gaming early laning phase lead. Most of the back of Afro and Sticks they being insane. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to keep shoving in, and Xmithy will have gank routes into the bottom lane if he wants it. If there's a counter gank, uh, I would expect it to come from him. Uh, Mid lane back, though, for Jensen. And Jensen, it's interesting, he took the Ignite on Katarina. Sometimes we see Teleport, sometimes we see people go for even things like Exhaust, but this is like the kill. I wanted to get an advantage in this lane summoner, and I, I think it's actually the optimal one to actually use here if you get a little bit more attention. Find it. Over the wall goes Contract, spotted, though, by this early ward out of Xmithy. Uh, they know where he is. Also by Scuttle, who he says, hello. Let's be friends. Teleport coming in. Shockwave right forces the Smithy. flash right into Xmithy. Contracts is definitely dead, and they give the kill to who he perfectly played by Xmithy. Of course, teleport canceled by uh, the top laner Darshan. Nicely done. Counter logic gaming. Trap contracts. Yeah, and Impact actually hits level six right afterwards, so he did not have the Stan United available. Uh, the teleport he had previously used Ooh, to get back died. to the lane. Sneaky could be killed for this. Uh, they know Impact 6, and you know Darshan's calling for it. Hey, 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 be careful. Stand your net is here. Look at that trade right there. No Shockwave means an easy trade. Jensen, though, sadly took turret shots. It made the trade worse than he wanted it. I believe he took two for the overall play. But you can see how low the C9 duo is, and they haven't gotten a back yet. Yeah. So anytime they do back, it's going to be a full wave lost. Control of both the top and the mid right here for CLG, so they're going to be able to ward up the blue, which doesn't actually mean too much in this matchup. Jensen wouldn't really want it. Uh... It's just CDR and Mono now. No. No AP. I gotta give credit to Sticksay and Afrimu, though. Counter pick, sure. Priority marksman pick and uh, counter pick on support. But Sticksay is up three, uh, two and a half hundred gold over Sneaky. And Afrimu himself actually plus 100 over Smoothie right now. So collectively, this, this lane about 300 gold up for Counter Logic Gaming. That is well played bot lane mechanics by a group that was doing pretty poorly. Coming into this match, CLG's dual lane was, on average, negative in gold at 10 minutes. Right now, up 300 against the number one NALCS team in dual lane gold at 10. Significant improvement here. Yep. Aphromoo also holding the wave for his buddy. Wait it's going to hurt. Get back. Doesn't matter. He's going to back anyway right afterwards. 
and doesn't, it's not going to miss any CS. It will mean desynced recalls. There is a 25 second window to hard dive stick say and hope it works out for him. I believe he'll hit six here as well off this wave though from solo experience. Pretty likely. So he'll have the chain of corruption. I don't think anything will really come through as he slowly tries to push this back out and you keep the caster minions alive yeah. so that when the enemy gets back to the lane, you can possibly make a play on them with your newly purchased support items as well sure. as your chain of corruption and your advantage. Want to point something out from contracts here. I think he was actually the player who was, maybe it was Anori, I, I may be forgetting. So uh, there's a Cosmic Jungle who gets two points in W really early on and uh, learns that it, it it's Anori, I think. I, I had a conversation with Anori about it. Yeah, yeah. So Anori puts two points in W early on because it means that two Void Spikes will clear the entire Raptor camp and it makes that camp really easy to kill. Contracts just simply maxing Q, mm -hmm. meaning Raptors are, I guess, a bit more of a chore. It's just a style choice, but it's just interesting that, that different junglers... Ooh, first it's Stixay dead. He's got almost no way out of this one. Exhaust is on. Yeah, it doesn't even burn flash. He knows he's dead. Yeah. Knows he's gone. Good kill. Just mobbed by all the little Voidlings. There's about yep. six of them there just running around. After we went to go ward the river, and that actually stopped him from getting level six, being nearby, and that got smoothie to hit level six. And they didn't have to use any of Sneaky's uh, summoner spells to do it. Right. Now, beautifully done right here in the first kill of the game coming through for Cloud9. But just to finalize the point, it's just fun seeing junglers have their own optimizations that they bring into the game where they're all very smart players, they're all very good at the game, and they say, you know what, I think this is more important. Quick clearing Raptor is worth it for me. I'll delay a little bit of point in my queue. Yeah, and the fact that, like, when I talked with Nori about it, uh, he puts two points into it, and then he hits it, and he actually runs backwards because the cooldown of it is so like short. Or something. So he actually just kites the little Raptors around for a bit. Then he throws them at him again, and that'll kill them. So that should be at the, uh, the jungle uh, item that does right, a little bit more DDR. Oh, the, uh, oh, you, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, upgraded smite. Uh, no, 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 the, um, not the machete, but the talisman. Hunter. Right, right, the, the, the talisman combined so that it, it does a little burn on them, right? Uh, it's just the talisman by itself. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But you, I guess you do start talisman normally, you're yeah, right, so. You do. You don't need to upgrade it to make that any better. It does get stronger if you upgrade. True. Okay, but you were right. I was, I was misleading the audience. My apologies, Irene. Don't argue with a jungler about I, jungle things. You're absolutely no. right. <laughs> I've started trying the jungle. I've been getting blasted really hard. Ah, nice. It's a thinking man's game. Yeah, you're the. You're Not the, a good strength of mine. In AD carry with all the mechanics. Hold on. Ooh, speaking of mechanics, contracts wants in flat by Huhi. There's a quick Ooh. taunt out from Impact. And goodbye, Shockwave. Not gonna come in in time. Impact will survive the turret damage. But Darshan wants in, quick snipe comes through and Stixay turns one kill around. Now Contract is alone and CLG getting the trade, a double coming in for Stixay. Turning around the gank, not quite gonna land that one. But we'll get a quick snipe at the end. Yeah. Jensen out. And all this poke as well, very squishy team for Cloud9. They don't have anybody who's really gonna absorb a lot of damage here. Smithy wants in. Flash following a Jensen, nowhere to go. Quick pickup again. A three for one overall for CLG, staying for the mid turret. Yep, they're gonna get this mid turret as well. Arrow is up, TP from Impact. They're trying to make a counterplay and get something off this. Aphromoo is the healthiest member on the team though. They're gonna go right back in for Smoothie. Look at this, CLG will not say die, Darshan. Here comes Shen. Gonna get away from aggro and wait. Back into the mix is Impact. Can he make one in this fight though? Makes Smithy low on health. One more kill, he'll do it. The kill with the taunt and actually, Sneaky as the well, smoke. throws up with Volley, a slow and Aphromoo makes his life a bit harder. But the shield's back in the shocker that never got cast last time around, looks for impact. And another kill comes through, CLG refusing to go negative in this fight. Look at that one more time, it's such a long exchange. Hui, yeah. Doesn't get to use the Shockwave the first time around, and Impact goes off to the bottom side, which is right in terms of getting away from turret aggro faster, but he does get sniped down. This is the Chain of Corruption. You could have juke and Jensen didn't go that way. Yeah, this right here, it's just taking Ash such a long time to get there, because he wanted to show off the wave. Sneaky was looking for one more. Jensen didn't respect this, and I talked about the Siege situation. You kind of need everybody when you're Cloud9 to actually counter the Siege, because uh, your wave clear is not that great. Katarina's not going to do it for you. Your, your Ash isn't really gonna cut it. Mm -hmm. And you're up against an Orianna and a Varus. Yeah. Minions drop quickly against the CLG lineup. So far, this Katarina pick not working out. Down in CS and 0 1 and 0. Hasn't yet made an impact on the game. Counter Logic Gaming looking to ride this through, actually, and mm -hmm. get the comeback win over Cloud9. They lost the first game and it didn't look close, and it, that's kind of the result people were expecting. C9, 3 0, CLG, bad start to the year. Yeah, okay. Congratulations on the 4-0 C9 before the day even starts. And now CLG making them work for it. 
They might take the upset win. Like CLG always seems to get it together by the end of the split. And this is just a little bit earlier for them, right? They always right. talk about, oh man, we have that slump in the middle or slump at the end. Slump at the beginning has been slump slumping for them one. a little bit in the last few splits here. Because Counter Logic Gaming, they've been together for such a long time that you we kind of know the level of these players, right? They're yeah. known quantity to some extent. So you know what to expect. And it just takes a little bit of ramp up for them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Didn't start off too strong in spring, end up giving uh, Immortals their only loss in the regular season, and then going to MSI in summer. Oh. Yeah. Same thing. Came back from MSI. What does this team look like? Uh, it looks kind of rough. Then they slowly start picking it up. Ends up going to five games against Immortals in the third, fourth place match, and going to Worlds off their points. Yep. Strung together enough wins. Yep. They always get it together by the end. This yeah. might be them getting it a little bit sooner. Unfortunate for them at Worlds, it ends after two weeks if you don't win yep. enough games. So I mean, CLG never get the chance to pick it back up uh, by the end there. Well, hit nice. Smithy though. Uh, Smithy, he pops a ghost and gets nothing out of it, of course. And there we go. First turn of the game goes to Counter Logic Gaming. A bit more of an advantage to go off that earlier mountain tree. Uh, Impact with the early TMAT to help Wave Spear himself in split push. Trying to apply pressure when other things are going on on the map. But the Gunblade now completed for Jensen. Yep, see Cloud9 are actually able to use the pressure to try to get back in this game, but CLG, they do have a decent lead on their wave clear, and now they can start rotating to other lanes, start getting to bottom lane, top lane, because they freed up their Orianna, and they put the cat on the back foot. So I talked about wave clear. Now she has a tier 2 turret to defend. Well, you've got a Darshan to defend right now. He's 1v2, gets the shield, puts the ulti on. He's running away, but his health bar dropping too fast. Darshan knows he's dead. Ready? Finally pulling in for a smithy. Will get dropped off, and now the damage up. But is it going to be enough? Looks for contracts. Shinulti not going to keep him alive. Smithy now a 1v1 impact. He can lifesteal steal take this. Here comes who he ghosts into the mix. Not going to get the shockwave. Not going to go for the play. Just a one for one, but it's a summoner down from CLG's mid laner on the roam. Yeah, I have to worry, though, because Jensen is here. So counter Lodge Gaming do have to back off the entire turret. So now you'll see Stix A push up the mid. Aphromoo will take control of the river, or at least attempt to. That's what they're expecting. And ah, that gives it away that he's there. Afro playing really risky right now. But they, yeah, but they do see where Jensen is. Yeah. And he was pushed back in his lane already, so. They were aware of the resources that could be spent. He felt okay. Yeah, Jensen wards continue to battle for wards. Yeah, Jensen went back to mid instead of shoving top just to try and make sure Stix A doesn't shove to tier two. Because uh, Infernal Drake is coming up. And if you are pushed in on your mid lane, it's so hard to get control of this uh, part of the map. And Infernal just means so much for both these teams. Mm -hmm. Stats really nice to have, absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a time where you would be like, Infernal's not that important. I think it's kind of like, if you're playing like, Amumu and like Maokai. I and play that AP Amumu. I don't know. What like, you're about. you know, Callista, I think, doesn't have the craziest ratios because he's more about like the rune king stuff. Are we making a composition where he's like. Like, I'm trying to make like some of the worst Infernal Drake champions. I think this is bad. I mean, it's hard to find a bot lane that doesn't want to scale off of ratios. Maybe maybe Mordekaiser would be a bad one. Uh, it would be like a tank support, right? Right, and like Braum. Ooh, yeah, Braum with that AP. But first of all, Akhmu with the AP getting chunked out. Arrow's gonna land as well. All the CC layered. Woo. Not a chance to get away. Sneaky getting the kill credit here. Stixie runs away and chops down some of those little little void links. So many void links to it. It's insane. It's like, it's like hard to navigate. He's got like 70 gold yeah, for him though. You're like getting this you're getting the void links around at that point. Like we're going StarCraft there. Wow, we're going for a little bit more on this one though. Links around, maybe not gonna matter here. Smithy wants in, can't get it, picked up there by contract. Now has to run away. Shockwave catches them though, and that's a kill picked up. And they gotta run away. Nope, gonna get rooted. It's gonna keep propagating as well. Jensen rooted as well. And just constantly sticks a wreaking havoc with the ultimate. Tags three different people. Flash of the wall by Smoothie. Team fight victory for Counter Logic Gaming. Ooh, actually had a arrow there hit sneaky. Now Impact trying to clear the minion wave a little bit before he actually has to back off. Fall to slow him down, and it's gonna be no more chase. But the push to the bot lane is still going to be alive. Sneaky has to play this right. Darshan can dive him. Darshan does have the flash. Sneaky has the flash as well. Impact no ult for seven seconds. And, and he knows attack. that. Yep. Looks like they're calling it out. And they're going to have Buhi rotate to the bottom. Go off will go towards the top side jungle. Counter Lodge Gaming with two turrets to the zero of Cloud9. In that last fight, though, Cloud9 did pick up the Infernal break. So that's the silver lining here for Cloud9, where a CLG have more control of the map at the moment. Every cloud is a silver lining, Zyrene. 
Bam. You talking about the D low or? <laughs> so this right here, Jensen, barely gets a kill, but he's rooted up and can't reset and jump out. Uh, overall, though, it did look like a fight that CLG were happy to take. I think they're going to be happy to take much more of those with who he playing the way he did on Oriana previously and the way he's playing in this game as well. He seems to be on point for them. Yeah. Got to agree. CLG's carries sharp right now. Support's doing nicely. And now we're back into the game. 18 minutes and change. 3,000 in the lead for Counter Logic Gaming against Predictions here. He'll be clearing the wave. Oriana every single time. and More than serviceable. Plus 20 in his matchup. Good kill participation, doing good things in this yeah. Oriana. Talking about good kill participation, Smithy, 100% yeah. still on this Olaf. This is exactly what he needed to be doing. Because Olaf, you know, people talk about how he falls off in that mid-late game if he didn't get going. They gave like one of the early kills to him too when he ran up top lane. Oh, so now he's at the point where he's got the Ghost on such a low cooldown. He's about to have the Dead Man's play. He's a monster when he gets in that backline. Sneaky can't stop him, Smoothie can't stop him. But AD carries hate him. Yeah. This Olaf is just going to be crushing, and he's hard to remove from the map at the moment. You see Sticks are giving a lot of respect to what could have been a dive by C9. They weren't actually near him. He could have last hit the minions, but he didn't know that. And shows the safer line of play of getting out of there, and giving up the 43 gold he could have farmed, and not dying. We're back to the lane pressure game. Back to pushing for waves. CLG should be the team with the lead, though. They've killed two of these outer turrets already. All that's left up is the top lane outer, and Jensen, not exactly a wave clear machine. They slowly send their duo lane back up there to push it. No surprise. Best turret sieges in the game usually come into the bot lane. There is no exception here. Fair into the map in 15 seconds. Drake gone for about four minutes, and means the only objective you care about if you're CLG are this Baron and this outside turret on the top lane. Looking for Jensen? Possibly making a play here. There's the arrow. Katarina's in. Good knock up there, and they get away with all of it. Yes, it's double summoner down for Six Day, but clears the way. At least he lives, yeah. And that's why you want that Varus when you have a low wave clear mid laner like a Cassidin or a Katarina. Jensen flashes the axe, looks for another, lands it. Now he's got to run away. Does manage to get that. Flash for Ghost. Another slow, though. Jensen actually. And you can see what CLG just did is they pulled four people top. Maokai was bottom, Darshan rotate to mid, so he's close. So he doesn't even have to blow his TP if they want to make a flank play and push him off the turret, whereas Impact is going to have to blow his. And that's what I was talking about in the previous game, where you want to have your top laner and the side lane rotate up a lane when your four rotate up a lane themselves. Nicely played right there. Just the threat of Xmithy jumping on you under the turret. Whimsy, a good replacement for Ghost when that one's on cooldown. And the new, if you got a melee range, Wild Growth is going to be a kill. Look at that, three turrets to zero. CLG playing the rotation correctly. It did give Impact some alone time in the bot lane. Darshan cleared mid, but Impact's gonna get several hundred damage off that bot lane outer turret, depending on how fast CLG can get back there. Are they yeah, yeah, kill it. the rotation now? It looks like he'll kill it. Yeah, looks like he will. So I pick that one up. Red team's turn. End of the day. I mean, CLG went for the play and it was the equal trade. They might have got a few more minion waves of farm overall, but it's outer turret for outer turret. And now there's less easy turrets for CLG to kill. But the map is more opened up, and that could still advantage CLG. If they are the advantaged team, why not find more open fights? 3,000 still the lead. Counter Logic Gaming, 21 and a half minutes in. Contrast clears away the Raptors and looks to find his next opening here. Yeah, at C9, they'll try to look for some picks here. Because they have a team that can operate from being spread out, from having a 1-3-1 with the Katarina in a side lane. Yeah. Um, instead of all being grouped up and just allowing the team to match your numbers and seed you down, uh, Impact will always have a way to get into the fight with both of his globals. But also, you have an Ash Arrow. So even if Jensen gets 1v1, it's really a 2v1. You can have Impact come in and offer a shield. You can have an Arrow. So mm -hmm. the way that they split and allocate their resources is going to be important to watch here for Cloud9. This Cloud Drake's coming up, uh, and they have control of it. Ooh, Ooh he... in they go. Ooh, he's running out of health rapidly, and he's going to drop right away. Well played. The flash ult for Smoothie makes it happen. Darshan taking up in front of his own turret. Arrow's going to land on Smithy. He has ulti. Doesn't need to pop it yet. Pop Ghost. Yeah, losing a lot of HP, but will stay alive. But Counter Logic Gaming poked away. Cloud9 showing these signs of life, showing these aggressive plays can work out for him. Yeah, and they want to siege down the turret. 
play a little bit for that break on the bottom right side. Clear the wave, move away, and pick that one up. Baron, though, is what they're going to try to look at here. Kind of logic gaming is get control. That side, they already have it. There's no vision here. Their health bar is so low. I don't think they can get anything really done. They can get ward control and a blue buff steal, but that's yeah. kind of it. They hawk shotted it just to yeah. make sure to call the bluff to be like, there's no way they're doing this, right? Contracts is going to face check this. Jump the wall. Too late. Okay. And he didn't want to risk the fact that CLG might have just all been there, so. Respectable restraint. Sixing looks for the play. Can't get it. Yomu's slowed down by Sneaky's volley, but could have been an ult. Could have been a forced flash out of the C9 bot laner. So you reset on the game. C9 actually two unanswered drakes in a row. One of them, CLG got a good team fight off of. You can't hurt him too much for it, but Counter Logic Gaming not playing a split push in comp. They've got the same lead they had for the prior game, and yet they can't even get the team fights they want. You'd think we've got the Orianna, we've got the Varus, we've got everything we need, we've got the Maokai. How can CLG not get the five on fives? Yeah. And then give away the objective to C9. It's so interesting because you would expect CLG to just group up in a lane and just push it down and you know, go for picks or say we have the superior wave clear in Siege, but there's a pick on the smoothie. And Stixay doesn't have the cooldowns enough to chunk him the rest of the way down. Impact ulti is enough to destroy it all. Maokai teleport actually completed because they've got inside track on mid lane tier two. It's going to be a long rotation for C9. They want mid. And this is what CLG want, is they want to actually have the Siege situation. Sticks they pops the edge of night, make sure he can't get locked up for a little bit or engaged on, and now they're going to back off as the Jensen is flanking. Yeah, Jensen's late to the party, but still CLG not able to pull the trigger. Kill. He's just going to die for Ooh. this one. Pops the rolls, the stun to Huhi. Reset. Goodbye to Oriana. The resets are there. Double kill so far in for contracts. How many more can they get? Darshan's out of HP. Slow. The slow comes in. Jensen's back in the mix. There's his third kill of the game. Three for zero, C9. And now they might look at that bear and the smite is down. They know the TP from Darshan is down. So even when he respawns, it's not going to matter. They have Void Links. They have the Shen to actually dodge some of these attacks. And so they won't take as much damage as you would expect them to. This is going to be a pretty secure oh, Baron there. pickup. Contracts over the wall. Not even a problem. Contracts secured. He found his mark, and there we go. Picked up Baron Nashler in the first major lead of the game for Cloud9. And it looked so good for CLG. They had him in a situation where, all right, they're all in front of us. Not really. It's Smithy off on the left side, not grouped up with the team. Jensen comes in from the side, gets the wild growth, and then the ultis onto Huhi for the pick. Arrow into the nether grass there. And then the chase down. That's what you want to do. Blow one person up, get some resets and continue. He okay. had every opportunity to not get hit by that Ash Arrow. He walked into it and had Flash available died without even ulting. That is a mistake you are not allowed to make at this level of play and costs counter logic gaming dearly. Well, I gotta say as well, like, where are the QSSs? We have not been seeing QSSs in this series versus Malzahar, so it's been really delayed. We have seen some mid laners be like, second item QSS, I gotta have it, you know. Mm -hmm. Third item QSS. Uh, these just seem to be rather delayed. 80 carries are delaying them until fifth item, fourth item. Yeah. And we've seen Cloud Drake movie with Malzahar really good at catching people out. Really good at starting that ulti off, and you know the rest of that CC is going to land afterwards. Yeah, and I think they're kind of counting on Smithy to absorb the arrows with his ultimate. And since he was off on the left side of that previous fight, there's just no way that he's actually going to take an arrow for somebody. You know. Not going to be the case. So there we go. Mid lane, outer turret killed. All three outers gone now. C9 have cracked in pretty successfully. Their lead about 4,000. Suddenly just turn it on the Ted. And they're taking control of the map. You can see how quickly they flip the switch and say, we're the team that's winning now. Let's take everything away. Contracts clears out some wards. Jumps the wall to stay safe. We already saw Impact pushing the lane in. Level 15 to 14 has the lead over Darshan. 50 CS up. Thanks. Yeah. I was talking about the matchup where the Tiamat comes in and then you just get split push advantage, but then Shen can run you around the map uh, with the teleport and the stand united, using the stand united more frequently because of the low cooldown uh, and getting the teleport out of Maokai where he'll start to miss some CS and it just adds up. You do it five times, he misses 10 every time and <laughs> you find us where we are at now. Well, Sieging continues, Cloud9. Uh, almost a formality at this point. You can see how much better Cloud9 look at Sieging. And yes, the Baron buff makes it a bit easier, but 
CLG never looked this good in their sieges. It's a 1-3-1 though, and I think that this is uh, something that we were seeing from CLG previously, where they're spreading out correctly, but there's four members in the mid. Jensen's alone up top. The Shen is winning the bottom lane matchup. Now he's up two levels. Uh, and it, despite a lack of wave clear, this was kind of a, a necessary Baron for Cloud9. If CLG get this Baron, you lose so much, but Sneaky! Ooh, speaking of losing a lot, their AD carry's gone. Sneaky is dropped off the face of the map. 40 seconds on the respawn. Counter Watch of Gaming finally a oh. sign of life. It took them a while. Let's see what they can get off it. I was like, this is just, is just such a dangerous three-man unit because you usually see like a Karma support or something that helps you get away. Uh, the Lulu support can only help one person at a time, really. Uh, so if they engage with four people on your three, they kind of flail around for a bit. It's an Ash. Uh, you also have like a Valzahar. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can rush at rush at them with Ghost and your Olaf. Quick server sash done now for who you can break out of these CCs. So. Call has been answered. I'll help him a little bit in dealing with some of these plays. Who he can now face tank arrows, pop QSS, and walk right back out. And of course, Smoothie can never find a good flash ult onto him, so one target off the table. See how much longer this has to go. 6A could turn a long sword into a Mercurial Scimitar himself, but he's still got a ways to go. Otherwise, his core build basically is done, but I think he's going to build towards the Lord Dominic's regards for better tank killing. That's usually next up on this build. Could be. The Executioner's Calling version as well with Mortal Reminder. We'll see. 4,000, the lead still for Cloud9, though, and they've got, once again, the deep wards in the jungle. They can spot the entrances. And that Drake is theirs when they want it. Smite goes to a smithy, nicely played, but now, contacts right back over to where he needs to be. Double Cloud Drake gonna be secure. Okay, we're talking about the QSS that came through for Huhi. Hey, he played it so well. It's actually an Ash Arrow from Sneaky. It hit Huhi. And he did an amazing job of QSSing it so quickly as they dove in on it, uh, to try and get him. Nicely played to make it happen. Yeah, it was actually Captain Jack's status. He didn't miss a beat. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, he did it again. Good job on the Huhi. We'll see if they can find more good plays. Huhi was a huge factor in their win earlier. His Oriana was game winning in the second. We'll see if he can find that again in the third. It is a Reasonably squishy lineup from Cloud9. Impact the only tank, the rest can be killed. Some of them building a bit of durability. Abyssal Scepter, Maul of Melmordius, rather it's Crystal Scepter, adding durability across several of these members. But a Shockwave is a Shockwave, it can win you a game. We'll see if CLG can find those moments or if Cloud9 can navigate around them successfully. But it's still the squad in blue on the left side of your screen who have the control. They can dictate the pace if they do it right. Play the ward game properly and give CLG permission about where they're allowed to be. Yeah, Jensen though, level 17, highest level in the game, two up above who he at the moment. Yeah, and now down the line you've got level leads, plus two mm -hmm. in the top lane, plus one in the jungle, plus two in the mid lane, plus one AD carry, plus one support. Yeah, a lot of that happens from Baron where they'll slingshot back up and pass people. Sometimes you're ahead and then they take Baron, you're just like, how's this guy out leveling me? A lot of experience in there and then you just get to siege and absorb it all. They also split the entire time, 1-3-1 uh, one, one, with Jensen in the side lane, as opposed to putting him in a four-man unit, which CLG was doing. So they were splitting experience four ways, mm -hmm. as opposed to C9 that were 1-3-1-ing. One, one sure. That's a wave of execute is not gaining anymore, and the resources going in towards Cloud9. It's always fun to watch, actually, if you go back and watch VODs of games. How did this team grow their gold without any kills or any turrets? They just got more mints, but the same number spawned for both sides, and you you can go back and watch and see, oh, here's where they missed some, here's where their team picked up another bit, and you can kind of see how those teams prioritize their resource allocation. Right now the resource is in the favor of Cloud9. Contracts, you can see the poke. He's, you know, the second tankiest member on the team, and that's still about a quarter of his health, maybe a third of his health from a single Varus Q. That damage is no joke from Stixay. Yeah, it's quite meaningful with all of that lethality and no armor items being purchased on yeah. anybody except for top laner as well as Jensen has arm guard now. Yeah. A minor gripe I have with the item order from Stixay is he oh finished boy. Last Whisper before yeah. he did uh, Giant Slayer mm -hmm. because there's exactly two armor items on like all of C9. The Last Whisper combined is basically nothing. Yeah. Actually has zero effect on contracts. Whereas if you had a Giant Slayer you just 10% bonus damage to almost everyone on the other team. It's actually better than it's, it's equivalent to 20 lethality, Giant Slayer. That's true. On anyone with more health than you. It's the exact same. Yep. It's actually a... 
it would actually be beneficial against everybody on that team. Yeah. Except and even for... better against the tanks than Lethality. That's true. Everybody except the Sneaky would be the only person who's yep. about his HP. Yep. Rylize for Smoothie putting him up a little bit above, so. You're right, Freak. 80 carry stuff. Math. All right, we'll see what else CLG can do for themselves. 4.8k the deficit. It's actually been getting worse. Cloud9 have continued to get more. And now, Cloud9, Jensen in the top lane. Looking a little bit uh, weak here, but that's going to make CLG rotate to the top as a five-man, four-man squad here. And then Jensen contracts and just continue to push. Here's the ghost. They're going there for the go. play. Can they catch Sneaky? Dodge the first axe, but now he's gotten Shockwave. Oh, he's he predicted the it. Ball. The flash off six and turns it back around. They've got to have the burst. They need to pick him off, and they get him. And they don't kill him fast enough or slow enough to pull impact over. So now they got to turn back to the top side because contracts and Jensen want to knock down this turret now to fight Darshan he's losing health rapidly he's isolated and the damage yeah. output is far too much pops guardian angel here comes the retreat here comes the respawn Darshan healed up flashes a follow he catches contracts look at the health bar diminishing rapidly but here comes the rest of CLG they're gonna make it a two for zero on this side of the map the shutdown on the one the shutdown on the other as C9 pushes more of the base so three kills answered but it's still several turrets picked up for cloud nine yeah they got that top one that's guardian the inhibitor and now they got that bottom tier two they're gonna look at this turret here Baron's on the map can on the you bottom. risk just going for it i feel like this is, has to be a clg baron and you send just enough to stop your inhibit from dying c9 knows the play now they're gonna go for the inhibitor themselves darshan should survive the 1v2 and he even stops the turret from going down this investor could have been for clg yeah no tp will come through from impact either he can't do it when darshan is right there and that's gonna be the baron Back to neck and neck right now. 3,000 gold deficit will get diminished when they catch the mini waves and knock down a turret or two. This was a huge catastrophe for Cloud9. I talked about how Xmithy just rushes the back line, rushes it sneaky. How do you get this Olaf off? Perfect axe there to predict the flash. He didn't throw it short, he threw it far so that it would slow as he walks all the way around. And now Jensen and Contracts are just trying to do their damnedest to take down Darshan, but everybody rotates up top. They'll lose two turrets here and a GA but they end up getting the Baron, and they get that one kill on a sneaky three kills here. Total for CLG. Really good CC right there. Whimsy used on to Jensen to keep him silenced. That was a clutch target selection there by Aphromoo. If you whimsy the Maokai instead, it would have done almost nothing. And they played it right. CLG now with the Baron buff can turn this back around. 3,000, the gold deficit to make up, and they can. Elder Dragon up in 15. It wouldn't be huge, but it would still be in... A source of income and a source of buffs. And previously I had talked about how this wave clear from C9 just sucks. So now they get to Siege and where, where's the wave clear? Who's gonna clear all of these out? You're just gonna have to forfeit these turrets. Battering Ram into the base, five versus four. Of course, Impact still yeah. splitting the top side. I don't know if he can win the game by himself, but if CLG ignores him, he certainly can. This will require a bit of proper shot calling, counter logic gaming. It's not a Fjord. This isn't someday status, so it's not going to die right away. You can see how slow this process really is. And they've been given the time to take this all down. CLG actually trapping in the jungle. You can see them waiting around by the Raptors, but they get revealed by a hawk shot from Sneaky, I think it was. Exactly. They try to hawk shot to make sure they aren't doing Elder Dragon, and Impact will continue to push the top wave. Darshan. And he, ooh, he gets interrupted. Who's going to be sent back? It's supposed to be the Maokai, but he's getting attacked, so he can't make it easy. Now, this is like the slowest death you could possibly have of a base. It's almost half HP on that top turret. Ooh, he's the one sent back. Below half. But now without Huhi, they can't win the team fight. Impact could ulti back in. They've even sent back Xmithy as well. So still just need to buy time until their team can reinforce. Yeah, so what you do right now if you're Impact is you just kind of hang out near that top side. You're like, all right, are they actually going to shove this out far enough? Maybe even do the red buff? Is he going to actually, is he going to back? All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Somehow Seals will have to pull a mid on that. Yeah, now Impact doing the red buff, I believe. And then he may go top just to shove it out again and cause that pressure because he has the globals available. Let's see what they can get. Hawkshot used again. The wards have been cleared out for the most part by Counter Logic Gaming. Will there be a chance for a steel contract? It's a risky 5, proposition. Ash arrow used. They want to fight this. Can they get in? They cannot. Good smite in by Xmithy. Elder Dragon picked up and not the biggest, but it is meaningful. It's a single Drake stack on them, so it's that yep. 90 true damage that'll be dealt. 90 true damage and 1.5 in uh, Mountain Drake. 15% bonus true damage to turrets. And the thing is, Baron won't spawn during the time this happens, so it's just the turrets that they get bonus damage to. Yep. Baron buff almost up as well. Sure. So 20 seconds left on that. Yep. 
And we'll see if Kyla Gaming can get anything more with the fact that they've taken this Elder Dragon. Keep in mind, inhibitors were answered, so there's no obvious map advantage. And Cloud9, coming into their fourth match, 3-0, were looking so strong. They were looking like the number one team in North America, considering they had taken down TSM, Dignitas, that they had really just handily won a lot of their matches. And it was hard to find a weak spot for these guys, but it seems like Counter Logic Gaming, their macro seems to be on point. They're spreading them thin. They're trying to make Cloud9 actually stretch a bit here. Yeah. And I mean, the season's not supposed to be easy for Cloud9. They're supposed to be these other really good teams. TSM beat them last time. Okay, they changed one player, but it's still TSM. They're supposed to be good. Counter-Logic Gaming keeps the lineup together. They're supposed to remain strong as well. And this is the form we expected to see from some of these teams. And yeah. Counter-Logic Gaming actually showing some strength, some signs of fight. And it's heartening for North American fans to see there's more than one good team in North America. On rosters have new players on them. You expect one like CLG that's stuck together to just maintain that synergy, use the experience and team building that they have had over the last three splits in Worlds yeah. to have a good start in the split. That's not what we saw in week one, but week two sure. looks to be fighting back. Well, it's really worth pointing out that yes, the roster can stay together and you've got that inbuilt team synergy, but all these teams take a break after Worlds, right? Counter-Logic Gaming kept the roster together. They only started scrimming one to two weeks before the season started. They were two weeks at most of scrims in when they played their first match. And You've added another week to that. 50% more practice than they had in week one. Certainly does look quite a bit better. And all these teams are going to be in that or even more shortened scenarios. And the growth will continue throughout the split. Any team that looks shaky in week one will look less so later on. Impact cutting away pretty easily. And as we recap our overall story points, we get back into the game of the Elder Dragon timing out. Or at least very, very soon. 10 seconds left on that. And it's a battle of middle inhibitor versus top inhibitor. Jensen splitting in the top lane without teleport. Yeah. Trusting his team can wave clear as he recalls away. And so CLG, like I said before, it's kind of on Ix Smithy to just be this beefy wall. Run in and just burst sneaky. And they're going to send Darshan back to actually try and deal with Jensen here. And deal with those waves. This is where his one team fight actually decides the game with an open base, open inhibitor on both sides. Jensen says, all right, I'm going to go top. Thought about it there for a second. Thought about fighting Darshan. Is he going to get delayed? Nope. Oh, he went in. He's looking right. for Darshan. If Look he can at kill the him. Damage output from Jensen. The shield buys a bit of time. A bot lane. Tier 2 is gone. Counterlogic Gaming now within 600 gold here. This is a tied match. If, if Jensen does enough damage to Darshan and pushes him off the turret, Impact can get there instantly if they stop these recalls. They just win the game in the 2v0. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. they don't know if they're recalling yet or not. Hawkshot may have come out there to actually give Darshan some heal, I think. Thing is, that last Q by Jensen puts him in combat, and it delays the home guard buff for a couple more seconds. He just now got it back to full health, back to wave clear. Yep, back to actually controlling the Baron pit now, which is where we'll probably see our yep. next conflict occur. And you've got an interesting situation here. CLG with the Mountain Drake obviously kills it quite a bit faster. Cloud9 have more combat state stats, I should say, thanks to the Infernal Drake, and of course can react to these plays thanks to the clouds. Yep. Also, both inhibitors are now coming back up, one yeah. for either team. Back to normal minions. And level-wise, uh, a lead actually for CLG, Aphromoo plus two levels, means almost nothing, but there is a mechanic in the game for those who don't know it. If your team is higher level, your minions outfight enemy minions, and you will passively push waves in as a result of this. It is a very slim margin with Afro being plus two over Smoothie, but does technically exist. That's now been diminished with Sneaky gaining one level. But technically, if everyone AFKs, the waves will slightly push towards C9. They won't AFK. I mean, it's not what we're in, but that can sometimes matter when you have reset lanes. Yeah. Caesar at portal down bottom. Impact is going to try to push in slowly. Hit two. He QSS. Okay, he needed to, but that means he's available as the target for Malzahar. The Baron down to two thousand out. The Ghost Combat Snail. And it's going to be picked up there by Counter Logic Gaming. The fight is on. Jensen pops the Zonia. Sneaky catches away from everything else. Smoothie out of the back line for Huhi. And a missed taunt flash by Impact. He gets nothing with it. Smithy going to lose Guardian Angel. A kill comes through on a Smoothie. 5v4. CLG wants more. Good flash gets away. And Six is dead. But there comes the first hit for Huhi. Turns one around. Jensen needs to save it all. But he's getting exhausted and picked and contracts the last one alongside Impact. And here comes the minions inside the base. It's a 2v2 top plus jungle versus top plus support. Impact pushing CLG away. Impact does have teleport. I don't think he's going to make that ballsy of a play, but if he can stop them. Okay, Darshan can recall. Afro has to guess right against Impact. Oh, I think he could have he finished that yeah, recall, he, I think. He could have, he could have. Because taunt was used. 
Either way, they're going to get back to base. It's not going to be too terrible, but there was a recent drop portal got placed down by Impact before that fight all happened, which made the inhibitor go down. Darshan, and Darshan in a bad way, tries to trade with contracts. The shield's pretty big, wants to absorb as much as he can and actually makes it a bit close, but the kill still comes through, and that's going to be a long time with map control here for Cloud9. And CLG, the only member that makes it away with the Baron buff is Afro move. So they did get the Baron. They only have one member with it. The gold is becoming more and more meaningless as people are picking up those six items for themselves. Afro goes War Mogs, by the way. Oh my god. Interesting choice. I don't know if more, more team-wide buffs would have been better, like Zeke's for the, the Varus, but wants to be tanky, wants to be able to survive anything he does. Yep. <laughs> get a nice bow in there. Zeke's, anything like that. Hard and sensor, but yep, tries to go in. Jensen has to Sony's right off the bat. That was interesting from Impact because he already used Taunt to try and get somebody on the top half of Baron as soon as he had gotten in. And the flash was just strange because the person was already locked up. They got enough shielding immediately afterwards. The contract comes in, Jensen deals enough damage, gets an exhaust, and Afro has to flash away there and the double taunt from Impact. So Impact's entrance into the fight wasn't that dramatic, but the way the fight ended with him was. Absolutely. Contract got himself a red buff and takes it away at the very end here. Cloud9 have, looks like, map control to play with. You can see all these mini waves are pushed in in C9's favor inside towards CLG's base. And once again, it's Counter Logic Gaming licking their wounds. The Baron buff is just not going to be much for Afro Moon. Um, I want to talk about that Zerat portal that was picked up because we changed Zerat portal recently so that the minions don't go as far but they deal way more damage. So you want to place them close to the structures, which means that it's not so much like a stall the wave, you know, it'll build up and- It's a kill the base structure. Exactly, it's a kill the base, which is exactly what Shen needs if he's in a split push and he's in a good spot. Nice. Yeah, which means nothing because he's already got potions and six yeah, items. They're max level and max gold. It, it's a stat, it looks cool. <laughs> Meaningless though. Uh, it's like, Impact has 2,000 gold burning a hole in his pocket right now. That's hot gold. Just melted gold, just straight from the smelter. Boo! It was funny, Shut they up. They only You guys are wrong. You're all out of touch. That was funny. <laughs> it's not me who's wrong, it's the children. Yes, 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 that's the <laughs> reference, thank you. Um, but they only boo because they know you're better than that. They expect more. Am, am I? No, am actually, I? you're right. That, that ah. joke was already so funny, it's my best work of all time. That actually might just be true. <laughs> uh, back to the game. Because <laughs> right now, everybody is just manipulating waves, trying to push in. There's that inhibitor down bottom, so an advantage for Cloud9. They put Impact on the top side. And then they try to just siege down the mid here. So Impact yep. will be by himself in that top lane. If Limited can, window. But they have to go bottom at some point on CLG's side to clear exactly. this wave out. Like the way that C9 are actually navigating uh, a lack of wave clear here mm -hmm. is quite interesting because they're just splitting and causing pressure and slow pushes. Uh, and if they, they win off of that, then that's quite impressive. Sure. It's just like how the last victory for CLG was quite impressive because Huhi had to just get the right people in the shockwave. And if we can do it again, Huhi's basically full build here. Deathcap Void Staff is the, the key one-shot combo. Jensen Deathcap himself is massive right now. You've got to respect the damage up of that champion. That Katarina is scary. Full build done for Sneaky. Full build done for Six Say. It's no crit. It's a lot of MR, though. Got Edge of Night and that Maw of Memordius. Total tally, 122. Here comes the TP play. Darshan wants in. Can he find it? Smoothie in the front line. They caught Sneaky QSS. Flash of the way. Front line's there. Shockwave onto a couple. Good damage on contracts. And here comes Impact trying to save it around. Darshan ulted up in the front, but he's okay. He's tanky on that Jensen's in. And there's Jensen CC'd and picked up. They immediately stopped him. Jensen kills himself. And now CLG's got to respect their base again because there's a rock portal inside of their, their walls. And they're going to lose that inhibitor anyway. Oh, isolated slow, 80%. Goodbye. Smithy's gone. smithy has gone, 4v4 on the map. And CLG once again lost the inhibitor. And the fact that Impact is split pushing and dropping this rot, then showing up is keeping CLG inside their own base. And even though Counter-Logic Gaming Got the kill in the mid laner. It's Cloud9 who take the Elder Dragon. And this is a big one, too. We saw CLG get the previous one only with one stack. This is 180. This is twice the size. Twice the power of this buff right now. And it's going to be difficult. It's getting harder and harder for Counter Logic Gaming. The builds are done, and we're seeing that C9 are playing the map better. And from Impact, he just 
Rift held off right here. The activatables from Smoothie throws down the locket, throws down the redemption right on top. Then Impact comes through after putting down his drop portal top lane to finish the job that he had started. Sneaky's arrow goes a little bit wide, but Jensen goes in, doesn't even get exhausted there. But they just blow him up, and that was so risky. Apple move. I don't know how he lands the Whimsy when Katarina's like underneath the outside. I know, it's crazy. I have no idea how he does it. That should like actually not be possible, and yet after he was able to whimsy him in the middle of that fight. I'm pretty sure he tagged Whimsy. I'm pretty sure that guy was a, a squirrel at that fight. That's just actually insane. A target enemy champions only. Right, this, this is the like <laughs> only skill shot, non-skill shot in the game. <laughs> Where your allies are on top of enemies and you'll click them instead. Right, dead. like 90% of players would miss that targeted ability. I just, it boggles my mind. Aframu is uh, trying to, I mean, he's winning the team fights. The problem is Impact is winning the map. The Zrop portal is just yep. hamstringing Counter Logic Gaming. Yeah, it's these item choices as well, where Darshan goes for a Banshee's Veil, and they're just trying to get tanky on the side of CLG. That's why the Warlocks came through. Wait, the play on a sneaky. sneaky. Can they catch him out? Shockwave on a smoothie, but it's a tanky and a member. And oh, the one shot! Who he's gone! Jensen's finding more. Aframu's onto the mix. Can they kill him off? Yes, they can. Sticks has got to kite this out, but Contract does too much damage, and it's a 4v3 advantage. Cloud9, Smithy next up on the table, and that's all she wrote. 4v2, Cloud9 is going to win this match. They're going to push in. Here comes the TP from Impact to try and make the 4-0 an undefeated end to Week 2. I don't think they can stop it. Darshan's set up here. Sticks are going to try to do some damage, but I don't see that they've got the tools they need. It's just a formality at this point. There is the final kill, as Stick say is the target slowed. The ace comes in, impact is on the base. The final cheers come out, and Cloud9 have done it. Four and zero to end week two. Undefeated, undisputed first place in North America. Cloud9. Little bit of a bump in that game, too. Didn't have the greatest of early games, and that was one of the fastest of the series. Then the longest of the series comes out afterwards. Yeah. Almost a 50-minute game there. Back and forth, playing without wave clear. And then Counter Logic Gaming, toe-to-toe, -to -toe when they had yes. struggled a bit. Okay, CLG will be a 1-3 in three team at the end of week two. But yeah. they didn't play like they were a 1-3 in three team. Exactly. It's, it's interesting to watch. We're still early on in the split. Strength of schedule certainly does matter a bit here. Cloud9 taking down the who's who of League of Legends, really. Right. Took down TSM, took down Counter Logic Gaming, took down Team Dignitas, were hyped as well. I mean, CLG have, or sorry, C9 have gone against the best and beaten them all. And I will say they look really strong right now. Few stumbles, few mistakes, things to tighten up for the squad of Cloud9. And CLG, that was the last fight, that very last fight, one you probably don't want to pick against an Elder Dragon buffed team. They thought they could get the pick onto Sneaky, and he just gets his way out of there. I mean, I think they had to. Because if you don't take that fight, you're up against Baron. You've already seen throughout this game, Impact is winning the split push game. The Zerat portal is breaking your base down. You don't ever have winning proposition for CLG. If you just wait to play the Siege game, you will eventually lose your game outright. I think Catalogic Gaming made the best play they could have. You could argue the mechanics, maybe, who he maybe shouldn't have died. He could have probably Zonias. Maybe there are things that could have changed a little bit. Maybe Sombrero himself with the Zonias, and you know, suddenly he gets to turn around on Jensen. But it's a bunch of what ifs yep. in split second decisions. But I will say, what put them in that situation of the what ifs is how well Cloud9 played around their side lanes. Yeah. I, even that middle inhibitor was the last one to really go down because they were just playing off side lanes. They were playing off impact, splitting, swapping which side of the map he was on. Jensen doing a lot of the same as well. The way they got even back in that game, because it was in Counter Logic Gaming's favor at the beginning, was yep. they made a very decisive play to dive in, to jump in, and to actually take a Baron afterwards to accelerate them and make sure that they could get those turrets and the inhibitors to start cracking the base. Right, and, and I think C9, once they got the lead, had played very well, very controlled, very smart. I, I really do think they played this game quite nicely. CLG, to keep in mind, this was a 50-minute game. They had a sizable lead early on. CLG had the tools, I think, that they needed to close the game out, and it felt like they were occasionally a little bit afraid of sieging. There were a couple of misplayed team guys as well, where the flank came in. Oops, 50 got one shot, two more died. Oh, I guess we gave you up, Baron. And, I think there are still some things CLG must learn, but they certainly looked a whole lot better than they did in their first three matches. And and I think we can see the beginning of the return of Counter Logic Gaming. If they can play this well, they're a top four team. Yep. It happens pretty much every time they'll have a little bit of yeah. a slump. You just gotta have faith. Well, CLG won a game to give the fans some hope. Hopefully it's not false hope. Now let's get the lowdown of that hard fought series and send it over the pastry and Cloud9's undefeated support. 
Thank you very much. I'm here with Smoothie after a ridiculous game, ridiculous series, actually. You guys are now undefeated 4-0 after week two, coming in this match against CLG. Do you think it'll be that easy? Um, definitely not. I was expecting a lot like less of a good start because, of course, we got a new jungler. But honestly, he meshes with our team really, really well. And yeah, we've just been doing pretty good. And it feels like, in general, the infrastructure's really been beefed up for the team. I know in the bottom lane, you guys have a coach there as well. How's that experience been for you? And how's that helping your development and, and the bottom lane in general for Cloud9? Um, I think Kane is a new experience for me because that's the first time I've actually had like a individual, uh, I guess, trainer. Um, he helps out with like uh, my vision control and just like the small things I didn't really think about. And it really does help out. And I think it shows in your, your play because you've been looking so good so far in the first few weeks. But I want to ask you about drafting now moving in, because again, coaching is a big thing on Cloud9. We know Reaper's a great coach. Do you have a, a say in picks and bands? Is it a team thing? Is it mostly Reaper? Kind of how does the Cloud9 drafting system work? Um, basic, almost, honestly, the drafting system goes like, we just give him all the information about how our lanes go and like, what, uh, like, if we're stronger in this matchup or whatever. And he just decides, like, at the end, what's, what do you give a pick? And it's, Pretty good. He's a really good coach and he gives us really good drafts. It certainly shows because you guys have been on fire pretty much apart from your nail biting series today. My last question for you, Smoothie. I've been hearing you guys comms a little more and it's amazing to hear how vocal you are as a player and you still have a much bigger voice and a lot of shot calling and team fighting is going on. Are you stepping up into more of a leadership role? How have you found like your new position on Cloud9 now that you've played with them for a year? Um, yeah, definitely this year especially I've been becoming a, more of a shot caller, I'd say, because um, when Medios left, he brought with him like a lot of shot calling experience too. Like it was me and him that mostly did a lot of the talking. Um, but now it's a new dynamic on the team, and uh, we're all just like feeding information. But like the, inf the shot calling comes from like just compiling that information and then just going with the play that makes sense there. And that's well, where I could come in. Sorry. Well, we're doing a pretty good job so far. 4 0 still after two weeks of play. Cloud9 looking undefeated. Smoothie and team looking good. We're going to go back to the analyst desk to wrap up the day. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. C9 keeping themselves in the undefeated first place position here. Didn't come easy for nope. them, but what a way to end the weekend. A very exciting three-game series between these two squads. I mean, every series with C9 seems to be pretty good, generally. They're a very interesting series. The one versus uh, Dignitas last yep. week was another good one. And, uh, I mean, here, overall, it was a great showing from CLG. I think they showed a lot better performance than they had shown in any of their previous series up against a great opponent in C9, obviously. And I think they were just slightly outclassed uh, over the course of the series, but mm -hmm. great, great showing overall. Let's talk about the draft a little bit because coming into the day, we had high praise for C9's drafting, saying, hey, it's hard to find a weakness in this team from the players as individuals uh, to the drafting and the coaching staff around them. Let's talk about this Katarina pick because although it was successful in that the victory came through, maybe not the best pick, given what CLG addressed. Right. I, I like the fact that when C9 goes for these kind of assassin-heavy counter picks, they often have other things set up in the comp to help it. So like a Shen, uh, something like that. And the Shen was honestly the star of this. The Cat, yeah. not so much. I think the fact that the other team had, or that they already showed the Malzahar and Lulu's a common counter pick. Lulu is good into assassins as well, on top of the lockdown that comes in from things like a Varus, a Maokai. You also have an Orianna good for keeping people alive. It's just hard to play an assassin to that comp. And the Katarina, while it did stuff this game, you look and say, could a control mage have done just as much in holding out while you let uh, Shen split push? I mean, the 1-3-1 one, one did help at times, right. but it never felt super impactful. I was about to say, it was a while until we saw Cat really start to do much of anything. Eventually, that 1-3-1 one, one came through, and we saw Jensen able to pressure Darsan on the Maokai. And then in the very late game, yeah, sure, there's a lot of damage coming out of Katarina, but that's to be expected when everyone's hitting six items. You mentioned the Shen. Before we get to the, you know, sheer effectiveness of the Shen in the split push late game, let's take a look at this earlier fight, 24 and a half minutes into the game, three for O for C9 in the mid lane. Right, I mean, up until this point, CLG have been controlling the game, and the fact of the matter is that CLG's comp is way better at team fighting when they're in formation, but they are not here. Smithy's off on the flank. flank. He gets caught off by Jensen. They have to blow so many defensive things, keeping alive a frontliner who should not be in that position. That also ruins their formation where everyone's stepping out of position to try and keep him alive. That who he gets sniped by the arrow. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's an easy chase down from C9, which basically lets them back into the game. And that's really the, the, the important thing to know is that if CLG like had never messed up their 
formation, all the initiation tools that come out of C9 hit the front line mostly, and it's very hard to start a fight where Cat feels free to go in. Yep. But as soon as you mess that up, as soon as you give up a flank, as soon as your front liner is not there in time, it's very possible for the C9 comp to go off. And CLG was in pretty solid control of the game up till that point. The 3 for 0 goes over to C9, they go over to the Baron from there, boom, we're right back into the game. Now let's set up our game plan from C9 in terms of how we win the game. And it's going to be through that 4-1 to the eventual kind of 1-3-1 split push in Shen. Let's look at this fight. 41 and a half minutes into the game. C9, 3 for 3 near Baron. So even trade. But look at the setup. Shen in the bot lane here on the split. Right, he's got the Zizirot left doing work. So if he has to TP in, he still has that pressure. Good steal attempt here. Uh, and ultimately, th this is a very crazy team fight where there's some Shen taunts missing, missing and then uh, Sneaky goes really big here and keeping his DPS up really, really high. Yeah. Able to focus down the front liners and then switches onto this. Right here, watch really well. Just watch Sneaky through this. Yeah, and then a great flash away as that comes in. Ultimately, they still get the follow-up and chase down on him, but he did so much work, it gives Jensen time to start going off as well, who also played the team fight extremely well. And then you're just left with the meat shields at the end of the right. fight, bumping into each yeah, other. Yeah, cooldowns come back up. The GAs pop all over the place. Contracts and Impact will now, from here, chase down, essentially, Darshan in that bot lane. Look at that gold graph. I mean, that's a, that's a game that has some stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, to me, yeah, it makes for a very exciting game, but, you know, from there, we saw where the split push, the kind of pressure that Shen was able to, uh, you know, provide for C9, that even in those even three for three or maybe two for three trades, C9 was still getting things on the map. Right, and I think that's where you really see the Shen come through. I mean, we, that was that fight was at 41 minutes. There's basically another 10 minutes. I think there was another Elder Dragon fight and another Baron fight that yes. was almost the exact same game situation where someone on C9's side is generating pressure in a side lane, which forces CLG to take suboptimal engages, and then they are not able to win the fights as hard as they need to. So then, you know, there's these chase downs happening where you have Zizorots finishing the game. Right, absolutely. Player of the game this time going around to impact for that Shen. Once again, with the split push pressure kind of allowing C9, giving them the breathing room, if anything, to extend the game to that 49 minute mark where they'll eventually win off of one good team fight. And at that point in the game, I mean, the casters were saying, you heard both Freak, uh, you heard Freak talking about it, CLG or C9 at this point with inhibs down, whoever wins the next fight wins the game. It went in C9's favor. Yeah, I mean, that, that Elder Dragon fight and a couple other close ones, uh, whereas like if CLG just managed to just barely win that fight a little harder, they can maybe snowball the entire game. And ultimately, they came up short. Their early game was good. I like the comp that they came up with here. They didn't think, oh, we have to put Darsh on another split pusher. They take the Maokai when they can get it. It works mm -hmm. out fine. Uh, and the ultimate problem was just that they were a little off in their coordination. And to be honest, it's a bit of a bummer to have to say, all right, CLG is now one and three on the split after a series like that, up against the best team in the league here, undefeated 4-0. They take him to three games, and all three of them are close, even the two losses. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it feels bad in a little way because you're expecting to, to feel better about, you know, oh, we played a really close series, but when you look at your rank, you know, your standing, you, you can't be too happy. You're, you're in the bottom half of the league. Um, but it is still early on in the season, and CLG improving is nice. But like we said, tend to play up to their competition or down to it. So right. this might have just been a good day. We need to see a repeat performance next week. Yeah, I think the big thing here is that the bot lane did step up today as compared to prior performances, as well as Huhi. So if those three can kind of become a more consistent pocket, then all that's left to work on is really that top side of the map. How does Darshan become effective in this tank meta where he seems to be a little lackluster still? Is it by completely diverting from it? I mean, you mentioned we've now seen the Swain. We've seen even the Sims. I know that's not a carry top laner, but it's something different than the normal, you know, the normal set. We've seen the Jaces, the Kleds, the Kennens. Like, can Darshan reach to any of these champions? I mean, I don't want to tell CLG, you know, how to run everything. Because You should I, tell I, them how to play the right, game here's, from start Here's to what finish. you would do. No, um, I think getting Darshan on a couple more matchups in LCS where he is on these kind of counter picks to tanks would even potentially oh, yeah. free up some uh, free up some draft for the rest of the team if people are getting scared of things you know like his trundle like his uh, if he started playing a Swain or Fiora Jace these kind of things we see him play Jace once already but if, if he had a couple effective performances on these kind of more split foot uh, split push focused champions then you start taking pressure off who he's champ pool which uh, is pretty specialized in a way so I think you, you could start freeing each other up a lot yeah well even with the loss CLG can look at this as improvement move into week three with a little bit more confidence Confidence. Maybe they've righted the ship and they're on their way to some victories for Cloud9. Yes, they're still undefeated, but they might be feeling a little bit iffy after having gone as far as they did in this three-game series. Impact picked up player of the game this time around. Let's see who else stood out 
as players this week. Two mid laners and three junglers walk away with two player of the game honors each. And over on our leaderboard, no one player stands out just yet. But yeah, you can see here this week's leaders, Bjergsen, Ignori, Frog, and Moon, and Dardock. I mean, those three junglers definitely went off. Bjergsen, you'll have to remember, played on Friday and Saturday, so we didn't get a glimpse of him today. I mean, Acadian's not on that leaderboard, but Acadian had great performances too. So, I mean, the, the young junglers in the league right now are looking really, really good. Right, here we are after week two. The likes of Jensen High and Someday all share three player of the game accolades. And for anyone who was doubting High coming into this split, three player of the games here in week two and a squad that's three and one right now. I don't think anyone was uh, gonna guess that would happen. Yeah, I definitely didn't under underrate high coming into this split at all. No, not me. Well, and, and actually, funnily enough, there's Moon right at the end of that, right? So you got two FlyQuest players sitting at the top of the table there when it comes to player of the game honors. Time now, though, to pull up the team standings to see how the teams rank at the end of the week. Cloud9 is our only first place team. They're followed by FlyQuest, who joins Phoenix One and TSM in second. And the rest of the teams fall into the middle of the pack ahead of Envy, who are still searching for their first win. Next week, we return with more North American LCS starting on Friday with Flame and Immortals looking to take down Phoenix One. After that, Team Envy will go again, go up rather against Team Liquid. If that's not enough League Esports, be sure to tune in to the Challenger stream this Wednesday. What about these two matchups, though? Which one's the big ticket for you? Uh, surprisingly, Friday? actually, Team Liquid versus Envy. I, I mean, I think uh, Immortals versus Phoenix One will, will probably have a little bit higher quality gameplay, but I think... There's a battle at the bottom of the table The here. battle at the bottom of the table is extremely important for a team in Team Liquid who's looking like they're a step behind the rest of the league right now in terms of their synergy. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, by week three, if you're still losing to a team that is expected to struggle, then you might find yourself outside the playoff picture pretty quickly. Right, and that's the thing. We again, You already mentioned it at the end of the Envy series. We have to remember, Lyra's only been here for a couple of days, right? So with a full week of practice under their belt, this might be up against a Team Liquid roster, their best opportunity to get a win here in the early weeks of the split and make, you know, or rather create some space for themselves when they get to the second half. Because right now at 0-4, you got to already start, you know, start thinking about, we got to get ourselves out of that seventh place spot. We got to get up there. Yeah, and I mean, TL still has like a lot of difficult matchups coming up. They haven't had, you know, the hardest strength of schedule overall. It's been, you know, they have FlyQuest and TSM, two good teams, but then they also have played CLG and, and a couple other teams. So they need to start putting together wins because uh, they were expected to be a playoff team and they don't look like it. Well, those two games come to you on Friday. If you missed any of the action this week, make sure to tune in after the show as Kobe, Azale, and myself are going to be doing NALCS tonight. Now for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Good night.